Hi, my name is Mike Wright, and I'm a senior software developer with Zoomasys. I'm here to talk to you today about PIC programming basics, the ins and outs of understanding PIC basic code that you've inherited wherever you work today. In this video, we'll be looking at a real world application that's been running in production systems since the 80s, which is quite incredible. Okay, so let's dive into some examples of code. What we see here is AccuTerm 8 connected to my JBase system, but this could be AccuTerm 8 connected to your PIC system, or even PuTTY or Visual Studio Code or another terminal emulator connected to that system. So we will be taking advantage of AccuTerm's WED function to, to do our development. So here we have a program that is a subroutine called Customer Maintenance. Well, in PIC Basic, you will encounter two main types of program files. One, a regular program, which starts and stops its execution just like you would expect of any other main program in another language. And two, a subroutine, which is specifically designed to be a section of code that can be called from other code. So, in this subroutine, after the declaration of the subroutine itself, we see some comments, and WED does a very nice job of highlighting those comments in green for us, which is very native to what we might see in other editors. Commonly in PIC basic programs, you'll run into the include statement, which may or may not contain a dollar sign prefix. Don't be alarmed, either way, with or without, it's, it's encompassing the same functionality, which is to include a record from a file that has some relevant code for the application. Maybe it's defining some global variables to use. Maybe it's opening some files that we want to read data from. Maybe it's defining a data schema. The point is that includes are there as a vehicle for putting standard and common and reusable code into other code. So speaking of variables, if, if the variables are defined in line in our code, it will look something like what we see on lines 15 through 21 of this program. On line 15, we have a variable named user.code that is being assigned to the value of this field function. In particular, the field is pulling a specific subset of information out of the thing that's being passed into it. And the thing that's being passed into it in this case is another function, oconvert, to do a data conversion. The point here is that when you're defining a new variable in a PIC system, you don't have to define the type before you name the variable. You simply name the variable, use an equal sign, and then insert whatever value you want. And that value might look like something on line 15, where it's the return from another function or a series of function calls. Or it might look like something on line 17, where it's just a number being assigned to the variable. In that case, a variable name message max. When discussing programming languages, pick basic or otherwise, a key element along with variable definition and manipulation is programming flow and conditional logic. And pick basic is no different here where we have many tools available to us. One of the most common that you'll see is the if statement with some sort of conditional logic baked into it and instructions to then perform some other kind of action. Along with that, you will sometimes see goes and go subs to instruct the code to go to another section of code inside of the program. And as it happens on line 26 of this program, we get an example of both the if statement with a wrapped go sub. So let's talk about it. In this case, it's a single variable which will evaluate the true or false. So if it contains a one, that's true. If it contains a zero, that's false. And the program will continue execution as normal. So here, this kind of reads, if there is no access, then we want to go to this subsection of code at 9100. And the WED editor in AccuTerm does a really handy thing where if you double click on those labels that trail a go sub statement or a go statement, it will allow you to jump to that section in the code. So I double clicked on it and I got a nice go to prompt and I say OK. And now we can go down and look at the code that will be executed in section 9100. In this case, there's a message variable that's being instantiated, followed by an, another go to a different section of code, which is right above in our case here. 
and then it will return back to the point where it was called, which will take us back up to the top of the program. Oftentimes in these programs, we will have a mixture of, of logic. So some of the things we'll be dealing with business logic, other with CRUD operations, other times with the interface level of the application. And in this case, this next chunk of code from lines 28 down to 66 is working on constructing some things that should be printed back to the terminal window for the user. At first glance, we, we see a header, you know, customer maintenance right here with some asterisks to print up top and some following statements to print out maybe some, some input fields or, or line options or things of that nature. So the WED does a great job again of guiding us visually and, and with colors on the different aspects of this. And, and what we have going on is a concatenation of variables and literal strings marked by the quotes to construct what should be printed to the terminal. So if we wanted to make a change to how this was printing to the screen, maybe we wanted to change zip code to postal code, we could come in here and just delete zip and type back in postal and feel comfortable in the fact that that change would reflect itself at the terminal when this is displayed. The next part of a PIC program that we're going to look at is to do with opening files from the database that we want to interact with data from. So what we have here on lines 197 to 235 are a series of open statements that are saying to the system, I want to open this specific file from the database into a local file variable, and if I don't find it, then I want to throw an error to the person, to the user, saying this file had an issue. That's how open statements will flow in general. The next thing we'll look at in PicBasic is how to handle doing some output converting or some input converting, because again, everything is treated as a string by default, and sometimes we might want to use that data differently on an interface or operationally. Dates are a great example of this, and we can see an example on line 238 where a local variable named today is being initialized and it's being set to the output conversion of the result of the date function to a human readable date that is delimited two month, two date, two year with a slash. And that command breaks down with oconvert in parentheses, our call to the date function, which will return the current date, and then a, a second parameter to instruct on the formatting that we want to use. And the D2 slash is what instructs the system to use the two month, two day, two year format and apply the slash as the delimiter in between. Sometimes you may also see I converts, which are the inverse of this. We're converting from an external format into our internal format. And the difference there would be instead of an O convert, it would be I convert. Otherwise, the syntax looks the same. Another construct that is common in programming that PIC Basic also shares is the idea of a switch statement or a case statement. And in PIC, they're called case statements. And on line 244, we can see one initialized with the words begin case. That should look and feel very similar to switch statements from other languages where we are saying we are going to switch on some sort of variable and then have a series of case statements that are evaluating that variable, except there's a little more flexibility here because we can merge however many variables we want into each of those distinct cases. It's important to note that while you're doing that, the order that they are listed inside of the case statements is, is important. The first match will be the one that is used, and then execution will continue beyond the case statement. It won't iterate through every matching thing. So keep that in mind, your order is important here. The other thing to note that's different from other languages is there's no need to issue the break statement. That, that is inherent by the definition of the next case statement to follow or the end of the case statement entirely. So that keeps the code a little bit cleaner. Oftentimes in your PIC programs, you'll encounter the call statement, which is saying to the system to execute another program, to make a call to that program, and more specifically, that subroutine. So what we have here is a call to another subroutine called company entry that is not being handed any other inputs. It's just making the call to it. Sometimes you will see subroutine calls that are passing other parameters, and that's indicated by open parentheses, 
parameter one, parameter two, comma delimited uh, through closing parentheses. Those parameters, important to understand, they're inputs and outputs. So you can handle data coming in and coming out of that subroutine that you're calling via those. In PickBasic, because everything is a string, that makes concatenation very easy. And on line 284, we have an example of this where we are initializing a local variable ar.utility.id to the concatenation of company number, which is a variable, and the literal string of asterisk a slash r. Once we've opened up a database file from the database into the program using the open statement, we can begin to interact with data from that file using the read statement, or the read v or the mat read. There's actually a few ways to go about this and they each have their own nuances, but we'll talk about the read first. So on line 285, we can see there's a read statement. So this really translates into read AR utilities from the program utilities file using the AR utility ID ID. And if that record is not found, we will go into the else clause to make sure that we initialize that AR utilities variable to an empty string. A difference between reads and read Vs, like we see on line 292, is that the read V is constructed in a very similar fashion, except that after taking a record ID as an input, it also takes an attribute number, which is really the index of an array. So we can say, we don't want to read the entire array of data for that record from the database. We just want to read in one particular index. So in this case, we're saying we want to read in whatever the contents of position one are. Attribute one, position one, index one, you can think of these all in the same fashion. The third type of read we'll look at is a mat read, which is equivalent to a read, except that it is initializing a dimensioned array. So when we use a mat read, it's important that we have previously initialized that array with a dim statement. Otherwise, it looks and feels and functions exactly like the read statement. So we've covered reading data from the database, but when we're ready to write information back out, PickBasic provides us a series of commands that looks and feels and functions almost equivalently to the read, except going in the opposite direction. And we'll start by looking at the write command, which is like the read intended to deal with a dynamic array, and in this case, write it back to disk. So on line 1525, we have the write of the phone X reference variable onto the customer phone X reference file using the ID that is the concatenation of two other variables with a little asterisk string in the middle. The next write we'll look at is the write v, which is an extension of the write, except that it also accepts an input of the attribute or the index that we want to write the data to inside of the record that's referenced. In that way, it functions a lot like the read v, where we're dealing with a subset of the record and not the entire record itself. Line 1717 is a great example of this, where we're dealing with attribute 17 of the record rather than the entire record. The third and final type of write that we'll look at is the mat write, which is dealing with dimensioned arrays rather than dynamic. So in this case, we're writing a dimensioned array to the disk for a file name that's specified on the record name that's specified. Thank you for joining me today for this introductory look at PickBasic. This is just the tip of the iceberg, so when you're ready for more, please check out pickmultivalue.com where we've posted more reference materials for your consumption. If you like the content of this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'm Mike Wright, Senior Software Developer with Zoomasys. Hope you have a great day.